Now, it's not all peace and harmony around the family executive table, as we've heard. One member who is not very happy is the Social Development Minister. And Margaret Ritchie's with me now. Uh, you're very welcome. Thank you. Uh, Peter Robinson uh, says the SELP have embarrassed themselves on this issue by you coming out and claiming that £30 million has been uh, cut from your budget. First of all, Jim, I would like to welcome the £15 million, um, for the Fuel Poverty Initiative. Uh, way back in May, I anticipated the crisis. I set up the Fuel Poverty Task Force. I presented proposals to my executive colleagues. Sadly, there were no executive meetings for 150 days. If there had been, these proposals would have been through. We'd have had legislation in place and payments being made. So uh, in that respect, I am glad that at long last that my proposals for fuel poverty have been accepted and that um, the, those people in receipt of income support and pension credit will start to get benefit early in the new year. And Peter Robinson protests too much. The very fact remains that there will be and there has been a smash and grab um, raid on my housing budget and I need to I suppose, explain the context for that as well. Um, though I already had a certain deficit in my housing budget. Housing is my number one priority. Uh, in order to, uh, to get approval to move money from one budget to another, I um, asked permission uh, to have £39 million, um, reallocated. They gave me nine million, and they took the other thirty million to give to other departments. So he does protest too much, and it is a misrepresentation of the real facts. Well, the the the, the, the facts, as he sees it, is that you can only volunteer to give up money that you can't spend, and therefore nobody took that off you, and that simply it was money that you couldn't have spent anyway. I um, sought permission, as you are required and obligated to do, to reprofile, to, re to put into another budget within my department. And rather than uh, give me full approval for that, they gave me nine million back and took the other thirty million and allocated it to other departments. That is the simple fact of the case. But more importantly, that will have devastating consequences for home improvements and maintenance budgets between now and the end of March. If it will have such devastating consequences, why didn't you vote against this in the executive? They're making great players saying this went through unanimously. You didn't force a vote. I made very. Um, um, strong reservations at the executive. I uh, uh, welcomed the funding for fuel poverty credit. At long last, OFM, DFM are agreeing to my proposals. Last week they were putting people out, uh, particularly the Deputy First Minister, to lobby against me and to campaign against my proposals. Now, not only are they supporting it this week, they're taking it over. But you ask the other question about housing. I made it very clear at the executive table that I had deep and grave reservations about the heist on the housing budget. And in fact, I requested an urgent meeting with the Minister for Finance, which I'm glad that he was able to concede to. But I wanted that meeting prior to him making the statement, which he wasn't able to fulfil. But I want it this week and I have asked him to do it. There's a job to be done and I want to be able to, uh, to continue my battle and my uh, uh, fight within the department for those who are disadvantaged, those who are vulnerable and above all for those who are going to suffer as a result of not having kitchen improvements carried out or bathroom improvements Should, carried out. Shouldn't you have voted against though because it's left us with one version of most of the ministers saying this was unanimously approved. Shouldn't you have, have very, voted against it very make clearly, clear your unhappiness? I made my unhappiness uh, very, very clear at the executive table and I indicated my very grave reservations. Yeah. Let's just uh, take another uh, clip from earlier in the day, Margaret Rich. I'd like to sit with us and uh, respond to this. Uh, this was how the Finance Minister, Nigel Dodds, characterised things when he spoke to the Chamber earlier. This is, I believe, not only a help in terms of the education sector, but across a wide number of sectors as well. And the fact that it received the unanimous support of all ministers in the executive this morning uh, seems to, uh, to me to run counter to some of the comments that we have had here in the Assembly uh, Chamber today, but nevertheless doesn't really surprise me in, in, in that uh, respect. But I think that at a time when we are tackling some major issues, when we are bringing forward some very positive proposal, uh, it ill behoves any uh, party with a representative in the executive to try to distort the position in a false way, which is actually not only untrue, but deeply damaging to their own department and their own minister. 
Well, Margaret Ritchie, they are. It's deeply damaging uh, to your department uh, and to you in particular. That is absolute rubbish. I am an executive minister. I believe firmly in, camp uh, in fighting and in um, working for those who are um, disadvantaged, those who are vulnerable and on the margins of society. And if I see that there has been a raid on my budget, particularly my housing budget, I will very quickly um, step into the breach to ensure that um, that budget is rectified. And I, that's why I sought an immediate meeting and I did it at the executive meeting. There was, no, there was no vote or no call for a vote at the executive meeting. But I will continue my work in order to secure that money that has been taken off me. So far as the fuel poverty credit um, payment is concerned, they say they've actually gone further than you were proposing because they've included pensioners, about 35,000 pensioners. Was that something you just missed out? Well, could I cast uh, everybody's mind back? Back in September when I submitted the proposals on two separate occasions to my executive colleagues for their um, discussion and for their consensus decision-making process, um, I uh, requested £32 million, which was far in excess. And then whenever I was having discussions with Minister Dodds, he told me there was very little money in the pot and I couldn't possibly get anything like that and it would be very, very little indeed, if anything. So I brought it back down and made the bid for something like uh, around about £11 million. I have no... Co in fact, this afternoon, my department, both Social Security Agency and the department down at the Lighthouse, is inundated with people who are seeking to find out if they can get this fuel poverty credit pay. I welcome that because there is a need for it. And in fact, the other thing that is important is that, there, uh, as predicted by my party colleague and leader Mark Durkin last week, I welcome the reduction in electricity prices because in that original fuel poverty paper, I was asking for collective corporate responsibility by the energy companies and in fact a contribution. Now, whilst it only brings us back a certain distance, and I agree with Eleanor Gill this morning, more needs to be done. And I'm glad about the fuel poverty credit payment. And I just wonder uh, 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 and want to see it um, delivered as quickly as possible. And I asked my executive colleagues to ensure that there was no clawback in the legislative process, that that needed to go through the executive the, um, social development committee and the assembly as quickly as possible through accelerated passage. There must be no delays on the part of the executive and, and the assembly in ensuring that this money gets out on the ground. OK, uh, Margaret, which I'm sure we haven't heard the last of it, but uh, thanks very much indeed.